As the coronavirus pandemic continues to sweep the globe, over 100 potential vaccines are being tested. Moderna, a Massachusetts biotechnology company, got the Food and Drug Administration's approval last week to fast-track development of a COVID-19 vaccine. The Cambridge-based drug maker is expected to begin the second phase of clinical trials soon and will evaluate the safety of two vaccinations given 28 days apart. Moderna's vaccine is one of eight currently in clinical development. According to the Washington Post, there are multiple companies launching trials at an unprecedented pace, but there are considerable concerns about the trade-offs between speed and safety in developing a vaccine as researchers are now trying to compress the timeline in ways they never have before. Carolyn Johnson wrote that piece and joins me now. She is a science reporter for The Washington Post. Carolyn, thanks very much for being with us. The National Institutes of Health says it could take 12 to 18 months to develop a vaccine, but is that a realistic timeline to develop a safe and effective one? Well, it's never been done before, so it's a very optimistic timeline, and people are definitely hopeful that we could be successful, but um, it hasn't been done before. So we don't know what to expect. And in science, there are no guarantees. So even a vaccine that is has a really good scientific premise for why it would work might not work. So we just have to wait and find out. Well, as pressure ramps up to get a vaccine approved, how are U.S. regulators making sure that safety is not being compromised in the process? The FDA, which is the agency that regulates vaccines and other medical products has been really clear that they're not going to sacrifice safety in order to get something to market faster. But there is so much urgency and so much demand that a lot of people are really worried about this. And because normal vaccine development usually takes years, not months, or you know even a year and a half, people are kind of unsure whether we're going to be able to be as confident about the effectiveness and safety of this vaccine for a very broad population. What we might very likely see is that it gets rolled out initially to people on the front lines in, in a kind of like a large test clinical trial to people like healthcare workers who are exposed and at risk. Well, the country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, testified before a Senate panel Tuesday. He discussed some of the challenges in vaccine development. Let's listen to some of that. I must warn that there's also the possibility of negative consequences, where certain vaccines can actually enhance the negative effect of the infection. The big unknown is efficacy. Will it be present or absence, and how durable will it be? So, Carolyn, what are some of the risks involved in developing a coronavirus vaccine, and what could happen if there was a bad vaccine? Well, one of the risks is what Dr. Fauci just mentioned, which is in some cases they're very worried that, you know, it's possible that the vaccine could make some cases of the disease more severe. We don't know that that's going to happen yet, but we have to. That's one of the reasons they have to do these big trials to test. And what's at stake is really the trust in the entire national program to keep people safe with vaccines in the U.S. The childhood vaccination program is one of the greatest public health interventions that we have, and so they're very going to be very uh, watchful about trying to keep things safe and effective because there's also an entire program here um, with a, a lot of infectious diseases. And if we undermine trust in that, it could be dangerous. So can we expect to see more than just one vaccine as scientists continue to learn about the virus in real time? I think so. I mean, as you said at the top of this, there's more than 100 vaccines in development, and that means at various stages. Some of them are just in, in like lab dishes, you know, and some are in animals, some are being tested in people. But because the demand is going to be potentially very large, almost the entire worldwide population, you kind of can't 
think all your egg put all your eggs in one basket. You need to try as much as you can to have alternate options in case one turns out not to work as well or one turns out to work better in a different population, like elderly people, um, for example. And so there's probably going to be many of them, and we don't know which ones are going to succeed in advance. So just to follow up here, so looking at global demand right now, is it even clear that developing a vaccine would be enough to end this pandemic? That it's the one thing that is kind of the light at the end of the tunnel that we've been all hoping could bring sort of normalcy back, uh, let us do things that we've all been kind of yearning to do the last weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no certainty about anything in science. Uh, I mean, I think given the energy and the effort, many people would say they would bet on there being a vaccine or hopefully multiple, but we we just don't know in advance. And I think it's going to be a tough path to when there is a vaccine. I mean, even if it happens at record speed, that's like a, a while from now. So people are going to still have to kind of learn to live with this virus in a way. Right. And we've already seen so many people uh, just in the last couple of months ready to reopen segments of the economy. And Dr. Fauci talking about the potential there for a resurgence. All right. Carolyn Johnson for us. Carolyn, thank you very much for sharing your reporting with us. Thanks so much.